So here is something that you may want to watch out because it can spoil the broth for you, for your team, for the products that you're working on. And that is micromanagement. So we're going to cover what is this anti-pattern? What sort of indicators you need to keep an eye on? Maybe some questions that you can prompt. And also antidotes. Micromanagement, I like to explain that is essentially obsessing with tasks or obsessing with the development process in itself. Doing so, it really turns to kill autonomy and creativity. And it leads to lower quality of work. Essentially, what it really surfaces, what it shows, is a lack of trust and freedom. How can you work out this happening in your team? So here are some indicators. This could be a sign of this damaging micromanagement happening. One thing is that in a very hierarchical way, the work gets a sign. Right? Essentially means that there is lack of autonomy to make decisions and take ownership of the work. Another thing to look at as an indicator is an excessive oversight. That's when monitoring um, what, how is the progress of work, right? Doing the like over obsessing with oversight, what really does is removes focus, energy, and headspace from the work being done. So it sort of contradicts the aim. Another indicator is resistance to change. Because if you don't evolve, you're essentially going backwards. Another indicator is focusing too much on pressure rather than on return. And that's also a sign of lack of security from whoever is putting that pressure on. So sometimes it's better to dig a little bit deeper why those behaviors are happening so that you can focus into the core of the issue, right? The insecurity of that individual and help for that to be resolved rather than in the other side. Another indicator is decreased energy, right? Because so much micromanagement just gets consumed, consumes the energy around. Another thing that you may spot is that the, the product in itself the, there is not really an end-to-end -end of usable deployed in market features. For example, only the business logic or only in database or only UI, but not a thing that can actually be used. And also another indicator could be low quality because we're rushing to complete work and work in long hours. Therefore, you know, things end up with not great quality. And it's important to monitor this very carefully in order so that you can surface and address them swiftly so you mitigate and regain a little bit more positive and productive environment. So you know the anti-pattern. You may have some indicators that are bubbling up. Here are some questions. Questions is a powerful way and simple way to help reflection to open possibilities and ultimately to serve the team. Those questions, I find them very good. As more as you practice, more comfortable you'll be with them. And it's good to have them in your back pocket. So you could be asking for clarity. What is our one goal this week? And do we have a shared understanding of the work that needs to be done for that one goal? Is that feasible? Which dependencies does it have? When you're looking at different items, who would like to champion that? that ability to self-own what the work's going to be. Maybe tap into each other's potential as things like, how can we pair on delivery? Or even approach the idea of the three amigos. Ask when you feel that there is a stuck moment, which options do we have to tackle this? Right? This one piece of work and or that one goal. Is that realistic? 
what may hinder us along the way? We very often think in happy paths, see a way, we'll do this, 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 this. Well, real life is far from this very linear and optimal path. So pause and reflect on what may hinder us, allow us to sort of have that planning, that half idea to adjust when it comes, if it comes on the way. Another question could be about what is that one thing that would allow us to have more creative headspace or to allow us to reduce noise this week? One thing this week. Right? So you use constraints to experiment. So after these questions, which other antidotes you could apply to this anti-pattern? Set common boundaries so that there is a shared understanding of acceptable behavior within and to the team. Also prioritize, finish, favor finishing over starting. Talk with probing questions there. Delegate or tap into for help and to avoid attempted external distractions. And yes, those external distractions include who shouts louder, demanding things. So protect, avoid that happening. A wonderful antidote is respect, is demonstrating through and by perspective and opinions that can help us to build trust. So listen actively, not transactionally, not to respond, not to give your own story but really empathize and understand where someone comes from and consider their ideas when there's a race and show appreciation, appreciation from the contributions. A great place to start is to remind also others of looking with positive intent. Now be flexible because the only constant is change. So expect the unexpected. And tap into the team as a collective to make informed decisions, even when those may be deferring to the next cycle. This is where we focus now. Let's not make some noise. Put this on the side. We'll think about it next week. Deferring or not making a decision is also a decision in itself. And it's okay. Give yourself headspace. And then measure. Measure, measure, measure. Log micromanagement indicators, aggregators so that it can be an information radiator to address unhelpful behaviors. It does really help on conversation. So tell me, what have you seen? What have you been through? What have you accomplished regarding micromanagement, abolishment? I hope this is helpful. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs>